The REIT market is vast and versatile with some small REITs, some large REITs, some risky REITs, some safer REITs. And so generally there isn't one REIT that will suit every sort of investors. The more aggressive total return oriented investors will favor something like medical properties trust, whereas the conservative income oriented investors might favor more something like realty income. But there are exceptions when a high quality REIT becomes so heavily discounted that it could make sense for most investors. And in today's video, I want to highlight two such examples for you. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. Before I go into this video, if you could please make me a favor and like the video that will help me a lot to grow this channel. And then secondly, Seeking Alpha recently reactivated the two-week free trial to my REIT newsletter. So if you want to access my entire portfolio, feel free to check that out. So the first REIT that I want to discuss here is called American Tower, ticker symbol AMT. This is the biggest cell tower REIT in the world. Its biggest clients are companies like AT&T, T-Mobile. It's leasing cell towers to them on a long-term basis and profiting from the growth of data consumption. It's a very defensive business that generates very consistent and predictable cash flow that's recession resistant. An American tower then combines this defensive business with a fortress, triple B plus investment grade rated balance sheet. And so it's barely impacted by the recent surge in interest rates. Moreover, the REIT has very predictable growth prospects because in its long-term leases, it has automatic annual rent escalators of about 3%. On top of that, it's also densifying its existing assets, adding new tenants to them, growing its NOI. And then finally, it's also still buying and developing new cell towers. Historically, this has allowed the REIT to grow its FFO per share at a high single digit growth rate, which combined with a 3% dividend yield has resulted in very significant outperformance relative to the REIT benchmarks as well as the SAP 500. Today, its business is doing just fine. But as the REIT market began to crash last year, American tower wasn't immune to the volatility and in fact it dropped even more than the average. And so as a result now it has become quite opportunistic for conservative investors but also more aggressive investors because now you can lock in a historically low valuation and also expect some upside in the recovery. Its share price is down 33% but over the same time frame its cash flow has actually risen by about 7% so adjusted for this the, the valuation is down about 40% which is very significant. The company keeps on growing today it's doing quite well it's not heavily impacted by the surge in interest rates its business is recession resistant and so based on today's valuation i estimate that american tower has the potential to deliver roughly double digit total returns from its yield plus its growth so irrespective of any repricing potential but then on top of that i think that it has about 20 percent upside potential to our fair value target today it's priced at about 17 times ffo we think that fair value is closer to 20 to 22 times as it recovers to those levels I expect its long streak of outperformance to continue in the years ahead and this is very attractive coming from a relatively defensive investment. Then the second read that I think would make sense for most investors is called triple N read ticker symbol NNN. This is a read that specializes in triple net lease properties such as Wendy's restaurants, Taco Bell restaurants, CVS pharmacies, dollar stores, 7-Eleven convenience stores. This type of single tenant service oriented retail properties back in my private equity days these were the properties we were also targeting most of the time. They are some of our favorite investments because of how the lease is structured to be very favorable to the landlord. So the first thing here is that the lease terms are typically really long at 10 to 15 years. Then the second thing is that the tenant is responsible typically for all property expenses, including even the maintenance of the property. So it's very hands off uh, for, for the landlord and you get your rent check and it's not diluted by a bunch of expenses. You, you know what you're getting into. Then the third thing is the lease will typically have some annual rent escalations of one to two percent which may not sound like much but it adds up over time and since you're getting these rent escalations without reinvesting in the building it really falls straight to the bottom line and then finally because your tenant is making money out of that property it's their profit center they end up being very depending on this specific property which gives you a lot of bargaining power as a landlord as leases expire. So the risk to reward of investing in net lease property is very attractive it results in consistent and predictable cash flow that's recession resistant and ultimately this has allowed this street to grow its dividend for over 30 years in a row even through the dot-com crash the great financial crisis the pandemic and now the recent surge in interest rates but despite that the read market doesn't care everything has crashed over the past year and this street wasn't immune to it it's still priced today at a roughly 25 percent discount to its pre-covid levels despite generating a lot higher cash flow today 
than back in 2019. I think that the market fears two things here. First one, rising interest rates, but the rate has a triple B plus rated balance sheet with 13 year long debt maturities on average. So no major impact on this front. Then the second thing that the REIT market appears to fear is the retail exposure. Retail is today out of favor. It fears retail because obviously it could be impacted if we go into a recession. But uh, once more, this fear doesn't really make much sense here because we're talking about triple net lease properties that are typically service oriented. The rent coverage ratios on this type of properties are typically near three times, which means that even if you go into a recession and the profitability drops somewhat, there is plenty of margin of safety before the tenant would uh, have difficulties paying for its rent. As I mentioned earlier, even during the great financial crisis and the pandemic, most tenants kept paying their rent in full and on time. The REIT was still able to hike its dividend. And so I think that if we go into a regular recession, this really won't have a major impact on the REIT. But even then, the market has now priced uh, this REIT at a large discount. It's priced at about 13 times FFO, which is historically low for this REIT. Typically, it has been priced closer to 16 to 24 times FFO. 24 is probably a bit of a stretch for this REIT, especially in today's interest rate environment. But I could really well see it recover closer to 16 to 18 times FFO, which would unlock about 20% upside. And in the meantime, you're in a 5% dividend yield. The REIT is growing its cash flow by about 5% per year. So just to those two combined together, all else held equal, you earn a roughly 10% total return, add some upside to it, and the risk reward becomes very compelling. And so these are two examples of REITs that I think would make sense for most investors. It goes without saying that this is not financial advice. You should still make sure it fits your risk tolerance, your return objectives, and other personal circumstances. But generally speaking, I would classify these two REITs as somewhat safer than the average of the REIT sector. And yet they have the potential to be more rewarding than the average because they have been unfairly beaten down. Now, if you want to access the rest of my REIT portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, if you could please like this video, that would really help me a lot. Thank you very much. See you at my next one. Bye bye.